There we go. And I've got the breakout room ready to open as soon as we're done with that. So, wow, Terry. Woo. <laughs> Really on the wall this morning at 6 a.m. over there. Whoa, really cool. I just jumped out of bed too. So this is the Courage Hour, and uh, I I just want to kind of open up with uh, courage to. Uh, I'll just explain a little bit. This this week uh, we had an incident in our. Uh, we have a big little league softball. Uh, compound in my my council district and and a child was poked with a needle that they found out on the uh, on in the field and that has erupted uh, rightly so a lot of concern about the homeless you know making an assumption that they left the needle there it could be it could not be but that's my you know that's my big thing on council is to try to try to manage and mitigate the homeless situation both for the citizens of the city and the homeless people and it just erupted this huge community reaction and it came down to them blaming the council mm -hmm. and so uh, which we can do nothing about but it came down to that so this is the second time i've been embroiled in kind of a big controversy where everybody's pointing their finger not just at me but at the council and the courage to just not let that get under my skin and uh recognize i can't control that and i'm doing everything i can and just knowing that you know i think that for me has been a real indication that i've grown uh that i have grown in my ability to uh to face controversy and and criticism <laughs> so there so i don't know if you've had experiences around that but i just i felt i just felt really courageous because we had council meeting tuesday night with all these irate parents in the you know in the audience uh and i talked to the president of the group and said please don't be angry and I suggested they let have one person come up and talk for all of them. And then they all stand up and say they agree. And they did that. And I would have never had the courage to, you know, confront that. And they were there for just about 10 minutes and they did their thing and they left. And there was no yelling. There was no. And I just uh, it was a, a really uh, confidence building. Mm. Uh, wait. <laughs> I thought of something that my dad that my dad shared with me. So when we come back from the when we come back from the time, um, like masterminding about it because it's yeah yeah great. I'm looking forward to it because I took the whole time. So <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Open the room for you guys, and I'll see you back in 40 minutes. Angry or um, when people are. Shooting things at you, like pretty much, like they're upset, and it comes across to you, even though you may not be the, you know, like you can't do anything about it. Um, he, so I was in seventh grade, and um, I was almost completely beat up by um, high schoolers. Like they were surrounding me and saying that I called my best friend a B word and like all these things. I'm like, I don't even talk like that. And so got home and my dad talked to me about forgiveness mm -hmm. and how, when things are happening that we're in an uncomfortable situation or we're things are being thrown at us that aren't deserved, um, that is our choice if we receive them, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can forgive and that's how we choose to protect ourselves from receiving them. And so I was thinking about that, like when they were blaming you and the board and all of that, like you can forgive without them even asking for forgiveness, but it's more for us and protection for us. So having the courage to, to forgive first is such a huge thing because of the protection that it provides for us. So yeah. like just that courage, it just reminded me of my dad talking to me about that and being in that circle where I literally almost got the crap beat out of me. Yeah, yeah, that's for something that wasn't true. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That makes me think of, uh, I mean, we were talking about surrendering and, and uh, surrendering the tool that we're going to share this month is forgiveness. 
And uh, forgiveness is, is uh, an amazing gift, you know, from God. And it's for us, you know, for us to forgive ourselves and others. And, and another tool that we use in fearless living is to see, see the other person's innocence. You know, these parents have a right to be upset, right? I mean, a child could have been really, we still don't know. Uh, it'll take months before they know if he contracted anything from the needle, uh, you know, penetrating his little finger. But at the same time, so they have a right to be, to be upset. I mean, I would be upset as well. I am upset about that as well. But seeing their innocence in, ter in terms of turning that on, on us, uh, you know, and blaming us. And I, that's just, like you said, I feel like I was able to, to see their side and know that it's not me personally, you know, cause it's out of my control. And that's where I noticed, Hey, I've grown, <laughs> I've grown in my courage, uh, to, to be able to, uh, not let that get to me. Yeah. Yeah. So who else has something to share on that topic? That's a pretty, uh, universal topic forgiveness and having the courage to forgive so terry i just want to add first of all like kudos for you to be aware of your own growth in that area and also um just thinking about how putting yourself like what you're doing in order to forgive and to help them forgive too is showing empathy for their situation and understanding that where they're coming from is also based on fear, right? Yeah. They're yeah. afraid of something. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. so to not let their fear trigger your fear, which is often what happens when and why we get defensive and feel like we've got to push back or whatever. And so you're allowing them to be heard. And you know what you did by giving them the space to be heard as a group um, through support of agreement, you know, is just so powerful. Um, they were seen not only as individuals, but as a group and a community. So yeah, really good stuff. Way to use, way to use those PQ muscles or your fitness muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Uh, Beck was talking last night about synergy, and it, it's amazing how things come together, you know, and they start to just really fit together. And I, that synergy of, of all the things that we're learning, because all of us are engaged in so many different communities that, that we're working towards the same, the same ability to be ourselves, to be our best selves. And then to turn around and share that, uh, you know, share that with the world. And uh, so that kind of reminds me of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going, putting their uh, mute button on. <laughs> so <laughs> any other thoughts about that? Uh, the courage to forgive or... I can't see what time it is, so I don't know how much time we have left. None. Okay. <laughs> That's, I'll stop the recording. Uh, this morning, for the last two hours, we have been talking in our, our mastermind about courage and forgiveness. And it's been edifying for me and uh, helped me to see how that works in my life. So we have a couple of minutes to continue that discussion of the tool of forgiveness. and the courage to forgive to ourselves first, and then to be able to forgive others, even when uh, we're maybe, oh, I can't think of the word, when we're not at fault in something and we're being attacked or blamed or uh, to have caused something that we had no control over. So I'll open the floor for the next minute or two and see if anyone else wants to add to that discussion. Um, it just made me think of perception. So something that came to me last night is really that perception is the only thing that I really have control over. Mm -hmm. And that comes back to forgiveness, right? Perceiving, you know, when we're in the negative situations and it's happening, what is our perception of why they're doing it or why it's happening or, you know, that kind of thing. So it all comes down to perception. Yeah. And from that perception, we take action, right? And that can either uh, be 
hurtful or it can be forgiving or it can be loving or empathetic, whatever, whatever we, we choose choice we yep. choose to react, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, well, I have no more time. Sorry. <laughs> I can see the two zeros. So um, anyway, thank you so much for your participation. We can continue this when we come back. Mastermind a bit. This is the end of the two hour courage uh, segment this morning. And we've been talking about forgiveness and courage. And, and we've seen a lot of that on, on our screen this morning uh, with stories that have been shared. So I feel edified and uh, ready to be more courageous myself today and to keep forgiveness in my heart for myself and others. So anybody else want to add a little bit to our, our closing here? I'll share something kind of fun <clears throat> is that um, when during the 40 minutes, I was filling out um, like my daily gratitudes and my intention and every day I write out my daily intention and I mentioned that I've added forgiveness into that. Well, today I, my hand ended up writing something extra in there as well. <laughs> um, so my intention today is today I am willing to practice being present through breath, connection, vitality, gratitude, and forgiveness. So that just snuck right in there. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm acknowledging myself for not scribbling it out or thinking that it was wrong or second guessing it, but welcoming in the vitality that is intended for this day. I love that. I love that. And you know what, when you said that word, it was like a little spark. I had this little, mm. ah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie caught it too. I saw her turn her head like, oh, like that. <laughs> it totally just reminded me of Vicky. Was that part of her intention? Wasn't it? Wasn't it part of hers? I think it was, it was, I have it written down somewhere. I'll, I'll look, I have, cause I initially, when we, when you made your intentions, I wrote them all down. So yeah. I'll have to look back and see. So, yeah. So vitality is one of five components that I had um, drawn out of me uh, years ago from a woman named Bonnie McVie. She was probably the first person that like actively coached me and like, like showed me in like words, my focuses and, um, presence, connection, vitality, mirth, and there was one other, I missed it. Connection. Did I ever say connection? I don't know. Um, but vitality, that was the first time that was brought to me. And I was like, okay. So it's something cool. fun that I love when it comes back into the mix and, um, I'm celebrating that I just let it flow today. And there it was yeah. this energy, right? And mirth to me means playfulness. Yeah, I had to look that up. I'm like, I know the word, but I'm like, I don't use it that often. Yeah, that, well, that's an old word. And yeah. it's, a, it's a good one, you know? It's a good one. Yeah, mirth. Uh, I think of it mostly like in uh, uh, movies. You'll see it in mid medieval movies or, you know, when there's a gesture or stuff like that. That's yeah. a common word, you know, mirth. But yeah, uh, on the, on the uh, calendar that Alana gave me, it says, the thing, the intention or the affirmation for today, for this month is I am playful. And so, yeah. Oh, I actually okay. have the note card from my true essence is what um, Bonnie had drew out of me and it's love, presence, connection, vitality, and mirth. And I went and wrote down the meanings of those words because I had to look it up too. I was like, what the heck is mirth? Is that a good thing? Yeah. What, you know, what is the definition <laughs> of vitality? So like, I like to know the definition so that I better understand it. Um, but yeah. So what was the definition you came up with for mirth? Uh, amusement, especially as expressed in laughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Happy. So, happy. I think of happiness. I think of a gesture when I think of mirth. <laughs> That's what I think of, you know, a uh, comedian, that kind of, you know, that kind of yeah. thing yeah playful that's funny that's fun to know that that was part of you know something that I learned about myself because that helped me um you know trust when I feel like oh I might be a little extra today you know yeah. that is the energy that I exude to people and help you know catch that vibe yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, that's part of my true essence and that helped me 
trust that I can, I can lean into that. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Just think of all those good words you just said. (laughs) Well, and it all comes down to courage, right? Like that's what we're talking about is the courage to be who we are. And that's something that I know is, um, been mirrored to me. That is part of my, my gem and my goodness. So, um, yeah, I, I did acknowledge myself. I think I might have said it, but I did acknowledge myself. Then also, like a second later, I was like, oh, you know, in the past, I probably would have scribbled it out and been like, nope, that's not supposed to be part of this. No, you know, in the mean... sentence, it's in the wrong spot. And I just let it flow. And I was like, I am allowing that to be the truth. Awesome. Awesome. So. What a great example of letting your intuition guide you. That's great. Yeah, I love that. And I love the fact that our intentions can be uh, organic, you know, as we grow. I mean, that intention can serve you. Uh, Last night, Sarah made a new intention, which I really like that too, because she's going into her second round with the steps. And um, it was just, it warms my soul to know that intentions have been uh, internalized, you know, in that way because I find them so strong and so powerful as well as acknowledgements. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're past time and I better get to my other meeting and it's been a pleasure. I'm going to stop the recording and uh, you go forth and 